My name is Joshua Moponga, Sose Karambok, all the way from Mwenimtapa Kingdom, son of Tovera, son of Mrenga. Again, addressing ourselves to the times, we would not find a better place to build up our conversation rather than in the book of Matthew chapter 7, verse 24 and 25, very short passage of scripture, but within it is included a very fundamental and critical message for our time. We are told a story of two people, a story of two nations, a story of two worldviews, a story of two families, a story of two people. Inasmuch as we may want to theologize around the divisions that are around us, ultimately there are only two people, the wise and the foolish. The Bible does not spare us the details of allowing us to get caught up in our professional differences, in our ethnic differences, and in our denominational differences, cultural diversities, national and the colors of our passports. The real issue when you read through the entire Bible, you only find two people, the wise people and the foolish people. 
In the beautiful parable given to us in Matthew chapter 7, we are given a story of two people, the wise men and the foolish men. All of them had opportunities. All of them had privileges. All of them had time. All of them had resources. All of them had families. And all of them had an equal opportunity to make the best out of their own lives. The passage introduces us to architecture. One group of people are those who may find that they want things easy. The other group is that they would rather work hard for that which sustains them. I know in the midst of this great problem that we are facing, many people around the world will fall in one of these groups, the group of the foolish and the group of the wise. I'll start off with the conclusion. The wise people are those who are going to look for permanent solutions to the problems that we are facing. The foolish people are those who are going to be looking for temporal solutions to the problems that we are facing. Two men leave their house early one morning. All of them are going to build up their houses. One man heads for the rocks, the other man heads for the sand. The man who heads for the rocks needs to know that it's going to take him lots of time. He has to crack the rocks. He has to pound the rocks and break them. To dig a foundation sustainable. To dig, dig a foundation enduring. To dig a foundation permanent. On this hard surface, he may have to face blisters in his hands. He has to burn in the heat of the sun. It surely will take him longer to get his house done. But he is determined that nothing will stop him until he puts his house where he wants to. The next man sets out also to build his house. This man likes the softer things in life. So he looks for the soft land, soft sand. He does not need as many tools for digging foundations. Because even with his hands, he can simply pan into the sand. And there will be his house. He also starts building his house. To completion. Bible is beautiful. The man who is wise builds to finish. The man who is foolish builds to finish. Is that not beautiful? That all of us in life, those who want quick things, those who want long-term things, those who want pleasure, those who want hard work, we all have an opportunity of building what we want and the structure will come just as you have stipulated, designed it to be. So at the end of the day, no one can blame another man and say, my house is not strong, your house is stronger. For we have an opportunity to build. And you can choose where you want to build your house. So two houses are standing. Two economies are standing. Two countries are standing. Two nations are standing. Two banks are standing. Education systems are standing. Medicine is standing. Culture is standing. We have an opportunity of deciding where we want to build our houses on. Where we want to build our economies on. Where we want to build our health systems on. Where we want to build information and knowledge to train up our own children. At the end of the day, we only remain with two people. Those who are wise and those who are foolish. Two houses standing, proudly painted furnished. Each man invites his wife, his family, and his children into his own house. Is it not beautiful sometimes when you read these texts that you almost feel like, yeah, so this passage means that we must put our foundations on Jesus and quickly we run into spiritualizing these passages. Have you stopped to think the psychology behind our civilizations? If they are built on solid ground. The foundation which is founded on our health, if it is built on solid ground. The structures of our families and education systems, if they are built on solid ground. Is the entertainment that we are consuming solid food? Can we question ourselves therefore and look into this text and say it's not only a religious text, 
but it's actually a mindset kind of a text that challenges all of us, governments out there, churches out there, social gatherings out there. May you please find out what is the foundation of your systems? What is the foundations of your organizations? Are you built? Are you founded? Are you established on that which is sustainable or you are sustained by that which is temporal? Two men build, two men finish, two men walk into the house. Bless your heart. It's only a matter of time before the clouds start gathering, before the winds start blowing, before the storms push up, before the rain falls and the floods go up, before the slides and the waters begin to make their way from the highlands into the lowlands. Has this not been true? That African people who have always been waiting in the lowlands, while the highlands, the first world, the educated, the globalists, the economists, the democrats, the people, the donors, will always wait for the leftovers and the floors that are coming down from their high houses that are packed on the sides of the mountain. And as Africans, we're always waiting in the valleys, waiting for the waters from the upperlands to come. Poetic justice is on this passage. For the rain falls on the house that is on the sand. The rain falls on the house that is on the rock. I like that part there. The storms beat the house that is standing on the sand. The storm beats on the house that is standing on the rocks. The winds shake the house that is standing in the sand. The winds shake the house that is standing on the rocks. Did you not hear me well? When troubles and disasters come, they don't choose. If religion was a thing that money could buy, the rich would live and the poor would die. But catastrophes are the great common denominator, the equalizer. That when the poor are being tested, the rich are also being tested. When the educated are being tested, the uneducated are being tested also. When the civilized are being tested, the uncivilized, quote unquote, are also being tested. When the haves are being tested, the have-nots are also being tested. When the first worlds are in panic, now even the third worlds are also in panic. When presidents are worried, Common people are also worried. Common denominator. Troubles strike us all. Rain falls on both. Storm tests both houses. Now many people come around and look at this passage again and miss the import of, of the text. The text is not here trying to destroy houses. No. The intention of the wind is not to destroy buildings. No. The intentions of the catastrophe is not to destroy People, no. The intention of the catastrophe is to test the foundations on which both houses, both civilizations, both systems, mindsets are established upon. Those who say there is no God, those who say there is God, welcome to the party. For when the storm comes, it chooses no one. The atheist and the faith-based miracle worker, tongue-lashing, demon-casting out, Pentecostal, baptized in the Holy Ghost and in fire, the prophetic ministry and the anointing. We are all being tested by the same storm. But what is interesting on the passage? We are not told the religious backgrounds of two people. We are not told the wealth amassment and wealth collection of both people. But what we know is that both of them were tasted. What is critical is knowledge and wisdom, which is able to make a decision before the storm. You didn't hear me well. Many people will wait for the moment of trouble to begin to look for solutions. Because in the moments of construction, in the moments of democracy, in the moments of putting together our systems, in the moments of establishing our constitutions, in the moments of establishing our religious liberties, and all these forms of systems that we have built upon ourselves, we all had equal time, opportune time, to decide what to do with ourselves. It is complicated, if not difficult, that during the moments of trouble, during the moments of disaster, during the moments of an epidemic, 
during the moments of coronavirus, now, in the midst of it all, we can think of starting to build universities for indigenous knowledge. We can start thinking of building new churches as to where can we find God in this moment of trouble. If you have not used moments of peace, if you have not used moments of constructions as moments of correct thinking, it will be too difficult, if not complicated, that you can think that you can start doing fresh construction when the storm is upon you. I must say with sadness, particularly to my African people, that we have waited too long, waiting for solutions from the West, hoping that now in the midst of trouble, we'll begin to find solutions for these problems. As the house on the sand is tested, the house on the rock is tested, the health system of Europe is being tested, the health system of Africa is being tested. Uh -huh. You heard me well? Prevention of the West is being tested. Prevention of the African is being tested. Mm -hmm. You didn't hear me well? The religion of the African is being tested. The religion of the European is being tested. I've not heard so far in the entire European country where they've now declared a day of prayer and a day of fasting. Now we know the God that they were talking about, they've never believed him in the first place. For when disaster comes, then the condition of the minds of men come into play. Now we know our government's over. They have not trust in their system, except in their own guns and in their own military vehicles. Because that's what they think is the best way of protecting people from the coronavirus. With all the preventions that they've put in place, tell me, can you get a bazooka? Can you get a shotgun and a hand grenade and shoot a virus that you can't see? It's amazing that nature again challenges the civilization of man to prove that the intelligence of man, if not in harmony with the principles of Yahweh, if not in harmony with the principles of the universe, if not in harmony with the principles of nature, the intelligence of man is proved to be foolishness. The man who is sitting in his house on the rock, he has the storm, he has the wind, and sits on his table, sits with his wife, waiting for the worst to happen. The man in the sand, while he is waiting for the worst to happen, water starts gathering in his own veranda. Carpets start lifting. It starts leaking. Foundations start dancing from side to side. As the floods are going up, the house starts becoming part of the dam itself. Water collects. The black book does not spare us the details. The fall of the house was great. Carrying its people, carrying its materials, carrying its sofas, its plasma screens, carrying its data cables, carrying its TVs, carrying its hot beds, carrying its sauna and jacuzzi rooms that had been, okay, fridges full of food. Uh-huh. Wardrobes with full of garments, full of garments, changing garments. Mm -hmm. Makeup kits, toys for children, playstations. You all know what I'm talking about in our modern civilizations what we have filled our houses with. Garages with cars and jogging and treadmills. Fully furnished house. Socks in the rain. And all of it with its occupants is driven into the dam. The history of them cannot be remembered. Not for anything else, but because they made the wrong decision at the beginning. I want to challenge the world out there. We have not chosen right. We have not built our civilizations on correct principles. We have not built our homes on correct principles. We have not built our governments on solid foundations. We have not built our food systems on solid natural foods. We have not built our cosmetics on solid principles. We have not built our entertainment on solid moral grounds. We have not furnished our houses with morality, chastity, respect and dignity. Instead, we opted for the sand. Entertainment comes in again where we just want to be happy and we have forgotten that life is not about happiness. Life is not about happiness only. Life is about establishing foundations that are sustainable during the moments of trouble. The house is bundled up and is driven into the sand. 
the world civilizations are proved to be useless, valueless in the midst of the storm that is upon us. We thank the Lord for the different picture that I want to share with you. The house that is standing on the rock. Solid foundations. Storms come. Winds come. Rain falls. Everything is going on. But the house stands strong and firm. When such catastrophes come and they test us, the question is, will we be found standing after the storm? Many people are going to die. Many people are going to end up in prison. Many people are going to end up infected. The world will never be the same again after this catastrophe. Even if things can be back to normal, it will no longer be normal. For everything has been tested. And only the things that are sustainable would remain to stand. I want to ask you a question. What are we going to do with all the investments that we had put so far on the sand? The house standing on the sand tells us one thing. The painting of the house cannot sustain it. The furnishings that are inside the house cannot sustain it. You didn't hear me well. The amount of things we've put around ourselves to block off the voice of God away from us. Headphones in our ears. And we're always listening to music. You get into your car, there is the radio talking. You get into your house, there is the TV talking. Play, play, play. When we sleep, we cannot even hear. We are always listening to something else that never builds us, but constantly destroys us. When is the last time when we are to shut up and listen? When catastrophes come and the clamp down comes, Many foolish people amongst us are running to the video shops, are increasing their bandwidth so that they can download Netflix, they can download movies, they can download movies, they can watch, they can do everything else and keep themselves entertained. If I were you, I would start digging up my lawn behind my house and start planting vegetables, planting potatoes, planting onions. I'll take this time and sit down with my children and tell them who they are and where they come from. I'll take some time to look into the eyes of those that are important to me and have a meaningful conversation with them. I'll take this moment as a lockdown on all external influences and start looking towards the inside person. For everything that is cosmetic cannot last you. Only the things that are fundamental in your foundation can last you longer. The house standing on the rock remained standing, not because it was painted nicely, but because it was standing on solid ground. Did you hear me? Therefore, establish the things that can be tested. There's no faith unless it can be tested faith. The house stands well at the beautiful morning when the sun comes up. The man stands up from his house, stretches out his hand, and says the storm is over. While the world teaches us to climb on top of each other, Undermine each other. Judge each other. All these things don't matter. What really matters at the end of the day, will your anchor hold in the times of storm? Will your anchor sustain you in the moments of trial? Then I heard a song the other day when I was still young that it went on to echo. It has stayed with me for the longest time. We have an anchor that thrills the soul. Steadfast and sure, the billows might roar. Fastened to the rock that it cannot move. Grounded, firm, and deep in the Savior's love. Therefore, we need to start finding these foundations. These unshakable rocks of Gibraltar. The other day I heard them say, we have a rock that we can lean on. Moses, go inside the rock, stand on it, and hide behind it. Because on this solid rock, this solid foundation, you can establish and build your family systems and your economic systems. You and I, I don't need to educate you that the economies of this world are being run by the rich to abuse and destroy the poor. The question is, will these anchors hold in the times of storm? Do not be led astray by doctrines, by teachings that are of cosmetic use. Don't waste your time putting too much powder on your face and tweezing and tweaking. For the morality of your own soul 
is a far much more better foundation to invest on than the cosmetics that are around you. When many people gather things around them and they think that by having things, they have themselves. Alas, their things now have them. They no longer have themselves. They are now occupied by things. You cannot separate them from their own things. But moments of catastrophe and moments of isolation. This lockdown and stay away is coming as a wake-up call. Can you go inside the house that you have built and stay there for yourself? Many people think that they are doing it for everybody else. Shame. We have always been taking our children to church because they were going to church for us. We are taking them to school because they are going to school for us. What we fail to do as parents, our children must now do it. But it's an opportunity that we need to start thinking. Is the foundation that we are building these characters on a sustainable foundation? I therefore want to declare that I am the watcher from the future, living with you in the present with solutions from the past. Least we forget where we are coming from. Least we fantasize about the future where we are going to. But honestly, not knowing where we are coming from, we are totally disillusioned about who we are. God never made a mistake when he created us as Africans. I want to establish this fact loud and clear. Let us as a nation find the solid foundations of solid foundations of governance, solid foundations of medicine, solid foundations of education, solid foundations of democracy, solid foundations of religion, solid foundations of family establishments. For unless we can build our nations, build our societies on solid foundations, when moments such as these come, we may just find that our house is all along been sitting and standing on the sand. What will we do in the world, in the land where we're 52 million people? And if 5 or 10% of those people can be infected by the virus, will our hospital contain it? Will our homes contain it? We may just find that we don't have a solid foundation. May the nation of Africa, may the families of Africa, may the kings of Africa, may the leaders of Africa take this advice that we begin from scratch establishing solid foundations. For too long, we've run away from our own cultural education, thinking that the European Eurocentric systems have solutions for us. Here we are with our boys walking around the towns with pens hanging between their knees and their waists. Here we are with our girls populating children while they're still sitting at home in the name of single parenting. Here we are with the divorce rate sitting at 60% and beyond. Here we are with our prison full of prisoners and criminals. Here we are working in the banks, yet still we are all still languishing and walking away poor. Here we are with our land growing grass while we are running to the shops to buy food. Here we are pumping ourselves with tablets and medicine when nature has always been waiting and looking at us as a place of our own diet. Have you not read the book of Genesis? I have given you every seed bearing fruit for food and all the herbs for food and medicine and healing. And yet we think that the foundation that was established by Yahweh is not sustainable. We will move our houses from the rock that we were given to build on and move on into the sand. Now the day of disaster is here. I have a question for you. Will your anchor hold? I pray that this conversation will assist you in terms of having a mental shift. Start valuing things that are valuable. Start putting time in things that are important. Build your own character. Build your own family. Build your own societies. Build your own nations on solid principles that have been tested. I've done enough reading into the Mahat laws of how a nation must be governed, the Torah laws of how nations must be governed. And if you look at all these universal laws, if you look at them very carefully, they're all talking about preservation of human lives, preservation of the society, preservation of nature. When disaster strikes, all the systems that are built on the sand will not sustain. May it be so with you that after this storm, you too can walk out of your house and stretch out your hand and say, I have been preserved. Not because of the things that I have around me, but because I made the right decisions. I challenge you today, make the right decisions. Build on solid foundations. Have a relationship with things that are sustainable 
Stop being cosmetic. Be real. Be real. Be real. Find your true reason of being. And may the Lord sustain you. And may the grace of Yah rest upon you all. And grant you peace in the midst of trouble. Let your house stand and be found solid, immovable, even after the storm. Amen.
sing it out, shout, for Jesus came down. 